<clears throat> okay, we're getting up and running here, guys. Give me a moment. Set everything up. We're almost there. Okay. Okay, we are live. Uh, live from uh, greetings, everybody. Let me take a little drink here. Sorry. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Martial Arts History Museum. My name is Michael Matsuda. I'm president and founder of the museum. Thank you all for tuning in. It's always great to hear that. We're trying something a little bit different. Uh, we are all broadcasting both on uh, Facebook Live, and we're broadcasting uh, also on YouTube Live. And then we're also broadcasting on uh, Museums Live and Dragon Fest Live. So <laughs> we're trying all these different ways of posting it. And uh, who knows, you know, we, we, we'll try it and see if it works. Okay. So greetings, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I hope everything's good. Uh, we're Todd Pete. Uh, happy birthday, my friend. Happy birthday to Todd Pete. Everybody wish Todd a happy birthday. So very good. Um, so everybody, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for giving me a little time of your day. So what's new? What's going on? What's happening here? Martial Arts History Museum. Well, I, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you, because as we continue to set new goals all the time, uh, we have just reached our goal for YouTube. Yes, yes, we have reached the goal of 4,000 viewing hours. It's what is required to get monetized, and we hit it this morning. We had 4,060 viewing hours. So they sent me a little notice and says, you have qualified for getting monetized on YouTube. So I filled out the paperwork and sent it in, or, you know, not sent it in, but you know what I mean, online. And uh, they said, we'll get back to you in about a month and let you know if you are monetized. So uh, we met the requirements. So yay, thank you everybody for watching all our videos. So thank you, appreciate it. Uh, Sean Funes says, hello, happy Sunday. And Todd P says, thank you for the shout out. Anytime, Todd, anytime. Uh, to again, shouting out to Todd Pete, his birthday today. So, uh, remember that Farmer John, you're another year old today. Remember that? Remember that? If you're as old as dirt, you remember that. <laughs> remember Hobo Kelly? See, see, I'm dating you. I'm dating you. If you remember Ho Hobo Kelly, Hobo Kelly was a, a lady that she put on makeup like a hobo, like a clown, and she had a whole show called Hobo Kelly. And there's one part in there, she'd hold up a, a, a magic, like uh, a magnifying glass kind of thing. And it was her, I don't know what she called it, but she had a magic something. And she, she'd look through it, and then she'd say, oh, I see Jimmy, and I see Susie, and I see so-and-so. And when you said your name, you go, oh, my God, Hobo Kelly just saw me in your way. <laughs> you know, it wasn't true, but it was a pretty good idea. So I was intent on listening every time. And when she mentioned my name, there I was. I said, oh, my God, I didn't tell my parents. Hobo Kelly just saw me. She actually saw me in, through her looking glass. So that, that was pretty fun. But it was a great show, Hobo Kelly. And then, of course, it was uh, Bozo. If you remember Bozo the Clown, then you're really old. <laughs> Bozo, okay. Robert McCullough says, hi. Very good. Thank you, Robert. And Troy Ransom signing on board. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So if you remember that, you're really old. And if you remember the Mickey Mouse Club, oh, my God, what a great show that was. The Mickey Mouse Club with all those guys. Hi, Robbie and all these guys they named. They, you know, Jeanette, Annette and, you know, all that. That was pretty fun back then. So, uh, okay, some people's comments right here. I remember on both. <laughs> And then I was just going to mention that. Howdy Doody. Now, now I, I could say honestly, I don't remember Howdy Doody. I remember it later on, but I don't remember seeing it. But I probably did. I don't remember Howdy Doody back then. But I do. Oh, look at uh, Samuel Kwok. Sifu. Sifu Samuel Kwok's watching. Everybody say hello to Sifu Samuel Kwok. He's there watching. Thank you very much. Um, so I remember Diver Dam. Do you remember that? Does anybody remember Diver Dan? 
Remember with a fish that would go, you know, and they talk in that barracuda guy. He had a cigarette outside of his, his when he would talk to Diver Dan. That was a great show, Diver Dan. I really enjoyed that. And then the, we're reminiscing here a little bit. And the Thunderbirds. Remember them? They had strings and there were these marionettes, you know, puppets. And uh, I, great rocket ships. And uh, that was a great series. Of the, 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 uh, I think, what was it called? The Thunder Guys, you know, you know what I mean. So uh, they, there were T Birds and a few others that copy the show. So it was a great time. Uh, the Thunderbirds. It was a lot of fun watching that back then. So, okay. Troy says, how about Speed Racer and Chim Chim? Yes. Yeah, Speed Racer was a little later on my time. If you were, see, my time was, you didn't have the commercial. The, the cartoons were black and white in my time. You know, Gigantor. Remember that? Gigantor. Remember that? You, 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 that was all black and white. And then Speed Racer came along and there was, there was color. But uh, they were all black and white back then. So anyway, great times. You know, uh, we all watched the same cartoons, the same fun stuff, you know. You know, the, we all have a relate to if, you, if you're old as dirt, we only had like, what, four channels or something like that. And then we watched the same stuff over and over. And, uh, you know, that's just how it was back then. Not today. You got a million. You got a million channels and you can't find a single one to watch. Am I right? <laughs> We grab Spike Corner. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. So anyway, uh, yeah, that, that's all we had back then. And then at what is it like twelve o'clock or something, one o'clock or something? All the stations would go off. That was it. You had no TV. You go doo, right, and then that was it. You 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 have to go to sleep because there was no programming. There were no till like five or six o'clock. There was no TV. That was it. So. That's all there was back then, you know, that's just the way it was. Uh, great times, though. For some, it was a great times. As a little kid, it was a great time. You know, it was a great time to grow up. You know, uh, Robert says, we only had three channels when we grew up in England. There you go. And, you know, that little, that little knob that you turn, it kept breaking off because we always switch it. You know, when, you know, we only had three channels, but here we are switching. And it break off so you get a pair of pliers, and then you, you turn it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all there was, you know, that's all there was. But, you know, they were fun times, you know, growing up. You know, we had a car big cardboard box that my dad would bring if we bought a, a dishwasher, you know, or something, uh, you know, uh, something big. And we play in the cardboard box. There was no Internet. There was no nothing. And that's all we did. Uh, Robert says, and we, oh, yeah. <laughs> Robert McCullough mentions that uh, on the channels, the TV, we had to tune to watch each one. Right, we had those rabbit ears. Yeah, okay, in case you're watching, and back when we were young, the TVs were black and white. They had an antenna, an antenna hooked up to the top of the TV. They're called rabbit ears. That's what we nicknamed them. And then for every channel, you have to adjust the rabbit ears. You know, go like this, and you're moving around. And then the TV, you would watch it, and then it would go like this. It would flip. So you're you're watching it, and then the line in the middle. Remember that? Yeah, Todd says you remember that. Okay. Chi uh, Gong says, it's me, Douglas Wong. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Seafood Douglas Wong is watching. So please say hello to one of our pioneers. We are so thrilled to get death. We have two great pioneers here from uh, way back when. Uh, uh, Sifu Samuel Kwok is watching and Sifu Douglas Wong is watching. How cool is that? How cool is that? So it's wonderful to have them here uh, watching. We truly appreciate it. Uh, so <laughs> we're talking about old times before we talk about the museum. Um, the, you know, the channels, they would go like this and there would be a line in the middle and they go flip, 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 flip to adjust it to get that thing from stop flipping. Flip, 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 flip. They, and then you go too far and then flip the other way, flip, 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 flip. And so you had to get it just right. And it was so hard to get just right, you know? And then, and then so it gets snowy and you had to move the antenna. It was just a chore to watch TV, but we loved it. You know, we loved it. We had our, our shows we watched, you know, I Love Lucy was on. And then later my favorite Martian and uh, Mr. Ed, right? Oh, oh, and one of my favorites, one of my favorites was uh, 
was uh, the Car 54. That was one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, Todd Pieces, uh, I remember when the stations used to go off at 12, right, 12. I was, I was my dad's first remote TV. Uh, what that means is back in the day, we didn't have a remote. Okay, there was no remote at all. Oh, look at I have some guests coming in. Hold on, guys, while you have some guests. Well, welcome yes. everybody. Welcome yeah. to the museum. How are you doing? Yes. Let me just turn it off. Sorry, yeah. making a live yeah. broadcast, yeah. but don't mind me. So yeah. welcome you? to the museum. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Very are good. Are you allowed to go three? Yes, you are, uh-huh. It's just uh, ten dollars for an adult, and don't worry about the kids. The museum. This is the world's first museum dedicated to martial arts. Mm -hmm. It's not a who's who, but look at martial arts, art, history, and culture, and how it came to America through film, TV, animation, and more. It's not a huge place, but it takes about thirty minutes to go through. Uh, thank you. Uh, everything was designed. Yeah, no problem, guys. Everything is designed by the people of Disney, DreamWorks, and The Simpsons. So please enjoy. Starts to your left. Comes around a circle. Feel free to take pictures, video, whatever you Thank like. You so much. Uh huh. No problem. And don't mind me. I'm broadcasting here, so ignore my voice. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Thank you guys for holding on. That's what happens. We have guests here, so we have a lot of guests coming in the door. Not a lot, you know. I would say few a day. It's not much, but a little bit. A little bit of guests coming in. Uh. So anyway, that's what the the TV was like. Now we were our first remote. My dad. Uh, Todd P says uh, he was his dad's first remote. So same with me. My dad would say, go up there and turn it. Channel 2, Channel 4. So we were the remotes. We'd walk up to the TV and we'd turn on the TV. we turn the channels for them and then we're just the rabbit ears. It was, it was such a chore. But again, again yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, someone says they watched the Gene Autry show, right? Did you see the Western shows were really fun back then? Uh, Gene Autry and all that. I used to watch, what's that, Luchador, the, the guy that put on the mask, the silver mask. I used to watch that one as well. So, uh, But my favorite was Car 54 back then. Uh, Car 54 was such a blast to watch. I still watch it today. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And, um, you know, some people we know are in it. Some people are still alive that, that are there. But that was a great show. It was a great show with Gunther Tootie and uh, Herman Munster and Grandpa were all in that stuff. So, Anyway, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I'm reading the comments on here. People are saying they had a blast too. You know, it was a great time in life. And, uh, you know, that's, again, that's the way it was. But we made, we made what we can with it. And then, you know, we play out in the yard. And then when they say when the lights go on and, the you know, the lights are outside in the street, it's time to get back home. <laughs> right. The Lone Ranger. Right. Rob Schreiber says he used to watch The Lone Ranger. And then Superman was fantastic. I used to love Superman. I used to put a towel around me all the time and think I'm Superman. <laughs> so anyway, just a great times, great times in history. Anyway, um, so uh, we, I, in case you just signed on, I just want to say congratulations. We have made the 4,000 viewing hours uh, to qualify for monetization on YouTube. We're actually 4,000 and 60 viewing hours. So they thank you everybody. Yay. Thank you everybody for getting us there. You know, I love these little, little, uh, how you say, um, milestones, those little, little task things uh, that we reach to a goal to get a goal and we keep, keep getting them. We keep hitting them. And, uh, every time we're racing, we keep hitting the goal and here we are, we're all together and we're really pushing YouTube and there we hit it all together. So you can say, you can say, you know, that, Hey, I was there. I was there, you know, it's just like um, Troy Ransom was, I, I mean, uh, 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 Richard Bash was just here. And we were talking about um, uh, little goals that we did and things we did for people or different things. And it's like um, when I used to go to Silom Pai, uh, Kung Fu, Hungar, and, and one of the days was our work day. And uh, I painted the pillars on there. And still today, I drive by it and I say, I, I painted that pillar right there. I painted that. So when you guys help out the museum, uh, you can honestly say, hey, I was there. I helped them make that goal of 4,000 viewing hours. You know, I was there, part of it. I was pushing and watching the videos and getting it out there, and we did it. We did it. So yay. Thank you, everybody, for uh, helping us reach this 
almost impossible task. We did it all in three months. Who does that in three months? And we did it in three months. So how fantastic is that? So thank you, everybody, for coming on board and getting us there. That's very kind of you. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, they'll approve us. We'll find out in, in a month, one month, and hopefully they'll approve us, and then we'll be good. So that'll be nice. So uh, Real Robert says, it has been an honor to help you. Thank you, guys. Again, we do a lot of different things like that to help out the museum in any way we can. Uh, that, that, it'll be fantastic. You know, it's just fantastic. So thank you all for being part of it. Um, uh, another thing I want to talk about is the expert class. Okay, now that we hit our goal, we're going to keep pushing. You know, we're not going to stop at 4,000. We're going to keep pushing. But we're also ready to launch the expert class. We're actually going to launch it sooner than I thought, so which is pretty cool. I was hoping to launch it maybe like mid-March, but actually I think I'm going to be ready sometime this week. Um, I'm going to actually put one of the expert classes on, on uh, I think, today. Matter of fact, today. So you can actually, actually access it later today. I'm, I'm building the website right now, literally. And then I got the video already done, and I'm going to put it on there today and then uh, show you guys how we're doing it. Right now, we're kind of fumbling through it, but we'll get it. We'll get it. We're fumbling through it, but we'll get all the stuff going on. Uh, we're going to put Benny Ukitas's available uh, hopefully today, later on, on marshallshop.com, and that way that'll be fantastic. So you guys can see that and enjoy it. Um, we are uh, launching both the expert class and the words of wisdom. So what we decided to do is kind of combine them on one page. For each person that way you don't go from one page to the other which go click and then go to that page and there it is so we're, we're working that out right now and doing the little programming behind it and get the video ready to go and hopefully later today uh, you'll be able to access at least one of the videos and we're gonna get that rolling and that'll be pretty exciting uh, we, Benny said some uh, uh, since Benny Yukita said some great stuff on there and we're gonna do a lot of stuff like that and that'll help our YouTube because it's all going to be connected to YouTube, and that'll help our YouTube channel quite a bit. So uh, that'll be exciting. Uh, I hope you also all enjoyed uh, my biography that just came out. Um, please forgive me if I did not include everybody's picture. I am so sorry. I tried my best to find everybody's picture and put it in there as much as I could, but some people I just couldn't find it, or it just, you know, it just, my whole mind couldn't get everybody in there. You know what I mean? I, I, I did my best at the time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was uh, pretty fun to do. Um, you know, uh, Robert Redfeather's watching. Thank you, Robert. He's driving back from the desert. There you go. There you go. So it was, It was. I hope you guys uh, learned a little bit about me in the uh, biography. I, I didn't put everything in there. You know, I didn't put uh, things people said to us and stuff like that. You know, along the way, we, we, we had some real heavy roadblocks of some people, I will not say their names, who they are, but some people who have just put stuff in our way, didn't want us to have this museum. I don't know why they don't want us to, but uh, we, believe me, we have been in some roadblocks galore, but you know, through it all, through it all, we're here, the place is open and people can enjoy it. And uh, that's what it's about. So uh, we, we made the place, we got the place, we're here. Uh, things are moving good on the other end, looking at the other grand. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it all goes through, and uh, that'll be fantastic. And that would be very exciting. In regard to Dragon Fest, because right now we are also hooked up right now live on Dragon Fest site, uh, our, uh, Facebook page, and uh, we are still in limbo, but uh, we're going to go forward like we're going to have it. We're going to go forward, and uh, it, it, if the place is there, fantastic. And everything moves forward, and we got the vaccine and everything. We can we can have Dragon Fest without a problem, but but we don't know what the future holds. So we're gonna again uh, wait till May and see where we're at. First, we're gonna see where we're at, and then hopefully we can do Dragon Fest, and that'll be a lot of fun. Maybe we'll do it outside. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, inside, inside, it'll be better. So anyway, uh, that's what's happening on that, at that end. Um, uh, again, in regard to the the biography, I hope you guys are enjoying the biographies. Um, our attention span, um, when someone watches the biography, the system uh, records how long they watch it, you know, not per person, but the average amount. 
and and when people watch it a longer time the the youtube looks at it and they give uh, more commercials they put a commercial in between here and there and and the more commercials they put in and a few other things they put in the longer you watch it uh, the more more funds that we get from youtube because people watch it long now on another channel i work with uh we only get a, a minute and 20 second retention that's the average retention on another channel i work with with this this channel with the museum channel the average retention is over 20 minutes to an hour so which is fantastic so that shows me everybody's watching the biographies so i, I hope you enjoy those biographies uh let's see robert says hats off to all your prevails and passions to get the place how it is amazing work and totally outstanding long live the museum thank you robert kind of you um, so everybody, everybody's watching for a long time. So thank you uh, for everybody. I hope you enjoy the biographies. Uh, if you do, let me know, and then we'll continue moving forward on making them. Uh, I have been putting other stuff on here, like a then and now, and that's okay to do. You know, it's fun to put a few of those here and there, but the biographies seem to be really kicking off well. I enjoy doing them. I'm a lot of fun doing them. And uh, so I think we'll kind of continue that path in there. So that'll be pretty exciting. So thank you for being a part of that. I appreciate it, everybody. And, you know, if you haven't seen Sifu Douglas Wong's biography, please do so. It's fantastic. And Sifu Samuel Kwok, we have to do a biography with you. And uh, we're going to do our best to get a bunch of biographies in. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, next, I'm going up to see John Corcoran's uh, wife. And we're going to do a little bit of stuff with her and then uh, get some clothes and different things. Uh, of John, they're donated to the museum, so that's going to be exciting. I'm going to see uh, um, uh, Stuart Sobel, I think it is. Um, let me see. I'm not going to want to touch the internet. Uh, anyway, when, uh, yeah, I think it is. Uh, go to his place, and he's going to be donating some things to the museum. I want to say thank you to all those people who have donated to the museum. Um, we we do our best. See if we, Douglas Wong was there. You know, we do our best to, to bring new things to the museum. We try to collect a lot of different things, and we know that, that things happen. Uh, I know right now a lot of schools are closing down, and uh, people don't know what to do with some stuff. I know some people have ancient stuff there and very historic stuff there, and, and when they give those things and donate those to the museum, that's very nice. Thank you very much, uh, especially those who have had a lot of stuff and uh, real historic stuff, and they think of us. I want to say many, many thanks to you guys for doing that. Um, Sifu Douglas Wong and I know, you know, Sifu knows that I borrowed everything in the world from them, from their lion head. You probably saw it in the video. Did you see it, Sifu? And all that stuff uh, to, to you know, name it, they donated it to help us out. You know, on a loan, they let loan to us and help us out. So it's, it was nice to have all that stuff. So I appreciate it when people do that, to send stuff and all that. Uh, Robert says, great idea on the biographies of more lives forever, future generations from, yeah. there you go. Yeah, that, you know, again, the biographies is, is a way to keep that history alive. All the biographies we do, we eventually put them on Amazon so people can buy them and have them signed. That's a nice idea to do that. And uh, so that's one of the things we do. And I think it's important to do it, do it right and do it professional. You know, I try to lace mine with a lot of pictures because i know i'm as boring as ever and uh so not to make my story boring i put some pretty good pictures that i found on there and i hope you guys enjoy it as well so i've actually watched the video like 10 times already even though i made it <laughs> uh i make uh oh look at robin has a question robin price robin says hello to robert redfeather very good uh so anyway uh the videos that we make are here shot on Nikon. I want to say thank you to uh, the Verdugo, Verdugo Hills Foundation. They donated the camera and the lighting equipment to us. That's very nice of them. Uh, Mario Prado shoots it here, most of them at the museum. And uh, we record it and then we edit it. I edit it on Final Cut Pro. So uh, I'm doing my best. It's a real old Final Cut Pro. But... Uh, and it, it works, so we edited it all in Final Cut Pro. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty fun to do. I, I enjoy doing it. It takes a couple of weeks to put one together, uh, mainly because I'm so picky at everything. You know, I just want it to be right. 
after all, this is going to be history, someone's history, someone's their life. And this might be the last thing, you know what I mean? Hopefully not the last thing, but at least it's something on there. So um, who does it? So anyway. Oh, someone has a question. Who is the founder of Monkey Kung Fu? Well, it depends on which Monkey Kung Fu. Uh, if Tai Xing Pei Kuar, it would be uh, Kao Su. Kao Su was the founder of uh, Monkey Kung Fu, if you're going with Tai Xing Pei Kuar. But there are other styles of Monkey Kung Fu. Ar Kui Wong did Shaolin Monkey. And uh, there are other stuff. There's Wushu Monkey out there. But the one we do is not that old. It's only a couple of year, year, 200 years old or so. And that's done by uh, Kao Tzu uh, from uh, China. So uh, that's where uh, Monkey came from, the one we do. The one Again, other people have mo other Monkey styles. And that's fantastic. And uh, But I don't know why. You know, Ar Kui Wong, I remember him doing a Shaolin Monkey. I, yeah, Shaolin Monkey. I saw it on D uh, Sifu Douglas Wong's uh, video. He shot him doing it. I remember that. And I saw that on there. So uh, many different styles of monkey are out there. So anyway, uh, so uh, that's it in regard to the videos. Uh, we're working on more biographies, and uh, we'll try to get more out there for you guys to enjoy. But I'm excited about the expert class. I think you're really going to enjoy it and have a lot of fun watching it. Oh, Dan Anderson, thank you for your support and your humble school in your wonderful biography. Oh, about your school. Thank you so much. I, I had pictures of Dan Anderson. Um, I, <laughs> I really wanted to get people's pictures in there. I really did. I wanted to get as many as I could in there. And so everybody could see how people are helping out the museum. And, and we put a lot of pictures in there, Dan Anderson students, and, and, and he was in there and many were in there. And, and I think it's nice to have that, you know, and, and I want people to remember who was there, you know, at that time period. And I think that's very important. So anyway, uh, hold on, guys. I'm just going to get the stickers. Give me two seconds right here. Okay. We give uh, we give some stickers to the kids that come to the museum. See so if find those stickers. All right. I'll get for these guys to enjoy. There we go. Okay. There we go. Fun stickers. And they get them. We give our kids get a lot of stuff here. So we give, we give bookmarks. See? We give bookmarks out to the kids. Uh -huh. Let's see a bookmark so the kids get a bookmark and that way they have something to take home with them and then we also give some cool pins so we give these great pins for the kids so we give them out as well we don't charge it for them oops of course i dropped it so we get another one here there we go you know some sort of member of my, i'm a big marketing guy <laughs> marketing is one of my specialties in college and i, I enjoy doing that so anyway uh, that's what we give the kids a little bit of uh, Someone else has a question. Robert says, did you get the hats and T-shirts in the shop? Not yet. Not yet, Robert. Not yet. I've been focusing mostly right now on the YouTube. And now that we hit our mark, the 4,000, now I can shift a little priority to uh, get the uh, classes, the expert class. The reason why we already shot the videos for it, a lot of them. And we're going to put that on there. So I'm going to try to get that on there this week and get it all done by next week, the whole thing done. Uh, by the following week, so it'll be a couple weeks, a couple weeks. And then once I'm doing that, I'm going to have the, the, the hats and stuff shot. And that way people can uh, look at professionally and then put it on. I'm going to work with America's Abisamas to create our shop for it. So it's going to be at Etsy, Etsy.com. And that's going to be pretty great. So... Uh, very good. The people are in the museum enjoying it, so that's that's always fun. It's good to see. We don't get too many guests right now. Museum doors are open, but uh, you know, right now we don't get too many guests. So, you know, we do what we can. We do what we can. So anyway, um, oh, they're so they're right here, close by. So they're all enjoying it. That's very good. It's always nice to see that. So anyway, uh, we're working on that, and then uh, we are working on the tiki guy as well. I know we got so much stuff to work on. The tiki guy and uh, I working on getting that voice ready and uh that'll be pretty good that'll be pre pretty fun i'm hoping to put that tiki guy up pretty soon very uh, good so hey guys how you guys doing are you enjoying it good 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 so uh-huh uh -huh. so sorry you're still having fun Let me see oh, sorry sorry about that <laughs> the animation but we're good we have a few animatronics here and uh, hit the button it's for him talking so anyway uh let's see what else so anyway uh, again i uh, hope you enjoyed the michael metsuda biography um to learn about my history and my past 
and the martial arts. Um, a lot of, of us have been doing it since the 60s, a few of us since the 60s. And uh, to experience that and to live that is a lot of fun, you know, to, especially the internationals. Sifu Douglas Wong can attest to that. Uh, the, the Long Beach internationals. I didn't have any good pictures of the internationals. You know, all the times, you know, back then there was no cell phones or anything like that. And I, I couldn't hardly find any pictures of, uh, for the internationals to post on there, let alone videos of the internationals. It was pretty hard to find, but I, I put a few stuff on there. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So anyway, that was a lot of fun to put out. And I can't think of anything else in the biography that didn't include. But uh, I, I just say it has been, you know, doing this politically, as far as the senators, the councilmen and all of them, we did it all. You know, I cannot tell you enough. Even though I did put in the biography, we went to every event you can think of. We went to the mayor's. Uh, dinner. We went out. All the I bumped into. The, I I was there on purpose to bump into the mayor to talk to him about the museum. The LA mayor, uh, Richard, uh, what's his name? I don't remember now. <laughs> Villa Ragosa or something like that. And um, and uh, you know, with everybody else, we kept going to event galore. We can't. I cannot tell you how many events that I went to so that I can schmooze with them and talk with them about the museum and. You know, we were just the horse riding and you name it, 5K runs and everything. <laughs> there was a 5K run I was doing with uh, Michael Antonovich. Michael Antonovich was the head of the, uh, how you say, the board or something. He was uh, one of these big guys anyway. And and we had a 5K run and it was really a 5K walk. And it was we were all walking and I had the Martial Arts History Museum t-shirt with a logo on the back. And, and so <laughs> as we're walking, I found out where he was in line, you know, walking. So he's walking, talking with a bunch of entourage. So I made sure I got just a little in front of him. So, so for the entire hour of walking, all he saw was the museum logo. Every moment he walked, and there I was right there in front of him. And then lo and behold, lo and behold, when I, I, I had been asking for sponsorship in the past, but this time, when I asked for sponsorship, there he he was there, and he said, "Sure, the martial arts history museum. Yeah, I know that place." And it's because I was walking in front of him with the logo, <laughs> so that's how desperate I was. Uh, we tried a lot of places. We met with council people galore, and uh, we even got thrown out of a couple places. You know, uh, uh, Padilla, uh, who is now I think a, a congressman. Uh, literally laughed us out of the office you know the museum i you know and they just he just just laughed us out of the office i can't cannot tell you how many people uh labanche is saying tom labanche same way you know if, if you didn't have you know I, i'm not gonna say any more about it but i'm just gonna say that that we did everything we could uh to to get the political people behind us uh in here in la in los angeles if uh, the museums get their lease for one dollar a year, that's how much they pay. One dollar a year for the gigantic property, the Natural History Museum, Japanese American Museum, Chinese Museum, they all get the whole place for one dollar a year. They don't pay any property taxes, they don't pay any mortgage, but that's what we do. We, we never got it. We did everything possible to try to get it, but we never got it. Didn't have a big politician you know, doing it for us, helping us. And uh, we did everything we could, could never get it for a dollar a year. That's what we get to buy the place ourselves. But we struggled, we tried. I want to say a big thank you to Richard Alacon, Senator Richard Alacon. He really made an effort to try and help us out for several years. And I really appreciate that. You know, Richard's family and I go way back. So he was uh, obligated, shall we say, by family to help us out. And that's what he did. He did everything to help us out, but we just couldn't get a place. But I want to say many thank yous to him for it for making an effort to help us get a location. Uh, we ended up here in the city of Burbank. We're now still in the city of Burbank. Uh, this is, we've been in Burbank for 11 years now. So 11 years here in Burbank. Uh, we are still surviving this COVID, you know, uh, as you know, uh, but uh, we are here in Burbank. Uh, the city council here has been fantastic with us. They've helped us with us uh, several different ways. So it is my goal, it is my goal if, we get the funding that we're looking for. I'm hoping 
to stay here in Burbank. I'm hoping to stay in Burbank. Uh, we have talked with the city of Glendale and other cities around us, and uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to stay here. You know, the, again, the council has been great to us, and we'll see what happens. Uh, my eye is on a certain place, and uh, hopefully that place will come out and the funding will come, and, and that'll be pretty good. Uh, Robert says, oh, a couple people are talking to each other. <laughs> nice, nice. Very good. So uh, let's see what else. Uh, I finally get now that things have calmed down and uh, some of the restaurants are open and I, I hear the gyms are going to be open. So that's going to be pretty, pretty good when we're able to get out there and do more things. I'm freaking out. I am. I'm freaking out being cooped up. I really am, especially at night, you know, <laughs> let alone everything that's happening at the museum. You know, I'm freaking out at night and I, I, I can't handle it being cooped up. So I'm always taking off at night and uh, for a little while, every night I'm taking off for I don't know, different times of the evening and just, you know how it is being cooped up. You're just ready to go like that guy, Cocoa Puffs, go crazy. I'm ready to go like that. So anyway, I hope this ends because I'm losing it. I'm just losing it. I really am. But, the, you know, doing the Photoshop and doing all this stuff for the museum, it keeps my mind off all that other stuff. So anyway, I'm working on that. Uh, as for the tiki for the museum, the talking tiki, matter of fact, I'm getting it up now. I just got it ready. I'm putting the platform where it sits on. I'll get that ready to go. And then by next by next weekend, we should have the tiki up there and talking. That would be pretty nice, you know, a little fun little talking animatronic thing that we have, you know, that Disney did, you know. So that's pretty fun to have something like that. Uh, someone says, oh, a couple of people are conversing on there. That's cool, guys. No problem. A few people are conversing back and forth. So, so that's what's going on. That's what's happening. Um, the next biography coming out, um, I think it's going to be uh, Graciela Casillas is coming out. I think that's the next one we're looking at. Oh, Dan says, has a question. Uh, Kim, I want to tell you, your wife, to tell your wife that they are both kindred spirits as we also sold our home to get into our current school location. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you for joining us, uh, everybody. I appreciate it very much. These are for you. These are little trinkets. There's a button and stickers for, for the kids to enjoy. So those are for you guys to have fun. Uh, any questions on anything in the museum? Oh, that's what we're doing. Okay, okay. It's our first time. Oh, nice. If you live out here in Southern California, uh, when the COVID is over in our back area, we throw events from seminars to movie screenings to different things, dinners, even uh, concerts uh, that are part of the museum. So uh, please uh, look, check with us, you know, later on, and then uh, that way you can tell what we're doing. Yeah, please stop by. Uh, thank you. Guys. Sorry about the broadcast. We just broadcast you out there. But take care, guys. Uh -huh. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? People come in. That's very nice of them. You know, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. People having a lot of fun. Uh, Marcel Smith is coming on. Thank you, Marcel. Uh, you know, we, we try to keep stuff for the kids and for them to have fun here. And uh, I hope they enjoy it. So Kimberly and uh, Dan sold their home. I know what it's like, guys. You know, we had, just to give you a quick little more information, uh, when we got the, we had raised enough funds to get the first location in Santa Clarita, Santa Clarita. We were there for almost about a year and, uh, you know, it was very hard. We rented out the place. It was not, it was not, it was not cheap and we rented out the place and, uh, it just took a lot of funds. And then when we tried to find the location, we looked everywhere, everywhere, you name it. We looked everywhere. Just, we couldn't get any help. The city would not help us whatsoever. Period. So we just, uh, my wife is the one suggested it, not me. She said, why don't we just do this? Well, why don't we sell our home and uh, we'll buy the museum, we'll buy the location. And that's what she did. She said, okay. And then that's uh, so sweet of her. Name is Karen, guys. And uh, just, it was her idea to do that. So because of her, this museum is still here because of her. Uh, we are living out of a suitcase right now. I know. You guys know what it's like. It'd be nice to get back into a home. It would be nice. So you do what you can for what you love. And hopefully all this will go through. You know, hopefully all will go through. So, yes, uh, Kim, you know, I've known Kim forever. So you guys did the same thing. You sold it to get your location. I know. It's what we love. 
Okay, there's a question here, Robert. Uh, well, it's important to always push a, a little more each time. It's how we grow, my friend. That is correct. You know, uh, we're always trying to set new goals, uh, new fundraisers, new different things. So we're always trying to experiment on different things that are helped the museum. We did. We had a, a telethon, a two-day telethon. We did live out here on Facebook. We did that uh, for a while. And we've done many things uh, to raise money from uh, selling tickets to uh, you name it. We even, we even had dinner with a movie star. Uh, Mark Dacascas, uh, we auctioned him off for like uh, $100 or something like that. And you got to have dinner with Mark Dacascas. And then we had dinner with James Liu. And then we had uh, dinner with um, uh, a couple other people that people got to have a dinner with a star. And that was pretty fun. Um, it, it, it didn't raise much. It really didn't. But it was a nice idea to do. I, I just want to also extend out... Um, uh, uh, many thank yous to James Liu. You know, James uh, is one of the students of uh, Sifu Douglas Wong, and James has been helping the museum uh, since the earliest stages that you can believe. Uh, James was here helping us push the museum. He had be at uh, all our events. I said, James, I need you here. Can you be here as our star? And he'd come. I said, James, I need help here. He'd come. James, I need you in the parade with me. He'd come. So, James was always here helping us out in the beginning, and so was Eric Lee. Eric was here helping us out, bringing us stuff, helping with a bunch of stuff, and they were helping us out in the earliest stages. So a big kudos to James Liu and Eric Lee for, uh, of course, Douglas Wong, Kerry Wong, but uh, also James Liu and Eric Lee. They were just here helping us out from the earliest times at the museum. You know, when you trace the museum, you go way back in the beginning of our starting uh, there was, uh, you know, Douglas Wong, Kerry Wong, uh, James Liu, and, of course, uh, Eric Lee. And they were there really pushing us off at Fireboards of Shock, of course. But uh, they were there even before Fireboards. It was them that was there and helping us for our dinners and helping us for our events. And they really helped push the museum out there. So many, many thank yous. Uh, James is just an amazing guy. And so is Eric Lee. And, you know, they <laughs> James gave here – you could have this in the museum. Here, why don't you give this? And he was just giving us a bunch of stuff to have on there, which we still have. And uh, anything you can think of or connecting us with anybody, that was very nice. Of him. So many, many kudos out to James Liu, Eric Lee, and all everybody who was there in the beginning. And then also, of course, to um, uh, oh, I, okay. I, see, this is what happened you get 80. You can't even remember some people's names. Uh, uh, Sifu uh, De Briguet, uh, was there in our early stages. Thank you, Sifu. Thank you for being there and helping us out. But again, uh, it was a struggle in the beginning. I cannot tell you the struggle that we had going through to get this museum notice. Uh, we paid for everything ourselves, my wife and I. Uh, you know, we didn't charge the museum anything. We didn't take funds from the museum. Everything raised, we went into the museum and anything traveling exhibit, we just paid for ourselves. The hotels before they paid for it and the exhibits, we paid for it ourselves and all that. Uh, Big thank you to uh, the Pace family, the Morin family, and Fireboards and Jacques for funding our displays. They're the guys that put money, said, we're going to make a display for you. And they made it without charging anything. And that was really nice of them. So we'd have something to take as an exhibit everywhere. everywhere. And uh, we, we took off. We, were, we, were, uh, took, we took an exhibit everywhere. You name it, we were there. We were, I said in the video, once a month. No, it was like two to three times a month. We were traveling with the exhibit. It was a lot of stuff to haul. And we'd be there Friday night, setting it up or earlier, and set it up for the weekend. And then uh, late, late Sunday night, we're packing it away. And it was a lot of work. You know, taking it out, setting it up, putting it out there, and then taking it back down. you got to be careful because this is other people's stuff, you know. Uh, we had to see who Douglas Wong's lion's head and all this stuff in there. So we got to be extra careful on everything and it was just so tiring my arms are still tiring of taking everything out <laughs> and you know you know it's uh, one time we went to vegas and we had an exhibit of vegas now vegas are very strict on everything and we had like a big truck and i don't something they call axles i don't know anything about that and we had to sneak the truck into vegas and that's not easy we had to sneak it into the casino in the lot before the workers got there 
because if we got there when the workers got there, they would unload it. They would charge us for unloading. So we had to sneak it in and we had to sneak it out and we got caught on our way out. And they said, hey, you're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to do that. And they said, so I just acted like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. And they were all upset, but they didn't charge us. So <laughs> we were lucky to get out of there. Uh, we have taken it to some places that you just wouldn't believe where we take it. I think the funnest place I went was the Queen Mary when we took it there. That was a lot of fun. We took a whole exhibit to the Queen Mary, and uh, we had a great time out there. People really enjoyed it. We took it to Toyota, to a Toyota itself, you know, and everything. So we took it everywhere. You name it, we took it everywhere. Uh, where are the displays walls now, you may ask? Well, in case you want some trivia, the display walls are right here at the museum. We just stripped the walls off, cleaned them, repainted them, and used them for our dividers and everything here in the museum. So if you want to have that little trivia piece, it says, what happened to the, all those display walls those people built for you that you took on exhibit? I said, well, there it is right there, sitting right here in the museum. All the walls in here are from the exhibit. So that's kind of cool to know. You know, when next time you come to the museum, you say, hey, that's, I think I remember that. Yep, that was a display wall that we had years ago. We just fixed them up, made them look nice. Anyway. <laughs> So we, have, we do what we can to survive. We do what we can. Excuse me. I'm very proud of the drawings that we have here at, at the museum. Um, I am not an artiste. I'm a graphic designer, and I can draw, but it takes me forever to draw. But I draw in Photoshop now. I don't draw drawing on paper. I do it all in Photoshop now. And some of the stuff that you see here, uh, all the stuff you see here, I did myself. So I'm very proud of the artwork on here. It was really hard to do, uh, but it was fun to do. I really enjoyed it. And I put my heart and soul into to doing the artwork here. Um, the first pieces of artwork were not as great because I didn't know. But as I went along, oh, here's how to do it. Here's the pixel ratio. And here's all this. I learned as I went along the way. And the older ones that you see, by the time you get to the media area, it's nice and sharp and clean because I, I learned how to do it along the way. What do they say? The, the necessity is, is the, the, the mother of invention, right? Well, that's what is here at the museum. We have learned everything you can think of at the museum. We've learned how to, to design. We've learned how to paint. We learned how to make molds. We learned how to make fake walls. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a learning experience. But we had to learn it, and we've learned it, and now we're using it. So that's what we're doing. My next thing coming up to learn is to put uh, rhinestones on the caps, making specialty caps for the museum. And someone is going to take me, someone I know, and then we're going to do a whole class on making rhinestones and putting on decorating caps. And that's what we're going to do, make a whole a series, you know, just one video of it, so you guys can learn how to do it as well. So anyway. Oh, Sensei Emmett says, who's there? Sensei, Sensei, who? Sensei, bad joke coming? I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. Sorry. There's a lot of stuff people are writing back and forth. I think it's to me. It's they're just talking online here. So anyway, uh, let's see. Sorry, get that away. Okay. So uh, that's about it. That's about it. Again, I'm glad you like the biography. Please watch it. And if you have any questions on anything, let me know. Uh, or, or if you want to know more about the museum. I didn't put everything, you know. Uh, the magazine I had, as you saw in those, called Martial Art Magazine. I started that magazine. Um, uh, the Valley College really helped me out, and many other people helped me put that together. That was a lot of fun to do, the magazines. Uh, you know, I enjoy the magazines. I, I, I would love when, uh, excuse me, when we get everything and hopefully all the funding comes through, I want to put out a martial arts history museum magazine. I really do. And to be like the old style Inside Kung Fu, you know. I loved Inside Kung Fu, one of the great magazines. Great people. They were really kind to me. And uh, that's what I want to redo. Bring it out and have it as the museum magazine. And that way we put our events, you know, and all the different things in the magazine. So it would be like a free magazine. 
but it'll be a magazine, you know, like the old days. And it'll be kind of cool with articles and stuff like that. And I think that'd be nice to get get that the feel of those magazines because I love the magazines. I really did. You know, they were just uh, something to hold on to and something to enjoy. Like, I got them right here. Like, I'm filled with magazines right behind me. And, and it's nice to see you, you know, if you have someone you know on the cover. It's kind of cool. It's kind of, and it, you know, the coolest part, the coolest part I have to say of doing the magazines was the cover. I love shooting the covers. They were the funnest things to put on there. So I have been thrilled to death to be on nine magazine covers. Uh, they are not all martial art magazines. Uh, I've been on the cover of uh, Producer Magazine for film. I've been on a lot of uh, bunch of bunch of covers for film and TV and stuff like that. Mostly film and stuff uh, that I did for when I was a uh, producer for commercials. And I got on several covers, which is kind of cool to have that. I was only on, uh, I think, a three magazines martial art magazine cover, but uh, usually with somebody, and sometimes sometimes just by myself, but usually with somebody else. So, but I enjoyed the magazines. They were just a lot of fun to do. And I would like to revive that back. And I think that'd be pretty fun to have a, a martial arts history museum uh, magazine. So that'd be really cool. I already got the cover design and everything. <laughs> oh, Robert McCullough says, also on YouTube, you should do a monthly event video with dates of events of that month. Uh, excellent uh, suggestion, Robert. And that is, that is also in the plan. Uh, we, if, if everything goes through, and we do get the funding, uh, the new location is going to be a campus. So it'd be quite large. And throughout the campus, there will be movie uh, screens. And we're going to have a martial arts history museum channel. And on the channel, we're going to have a bunch of shows and our events. And we're actually going to have a TV series, shall we say. And all these different things will be on the channel. So literally, we'll have like El Rey Network has a channel or Nickelodeon has a channel. We're going to do the same thing. So that's, that was going to be our, that is our plan to do, to have a channel so people can watch the TV show and see what's happening at the museum. All the events are going on, uh, monthly events and all that. So that'll be kind of cool. And who knows, maybe get can get really picked up well and the channel will go everywhere. And that'll be, that'll be neat to do. But I always want to do a channel, and uh, you know Robert Rodriguez did it with El Rey Network, and I said, guys, you know, uh, if he can do it, we can do it. So uh, that'll be nice to have a channel, and that way we can do some more interviews and do some live stuff, and you know that'll be a great coverage for the museum, and it'll be be great uh, advertising for everybody to come on there. You know what I mean? So it'll be like a like a like a TV magazine. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, I on the town, or I don't even know what's on anymore. I don't, I don't watch regular TV. I'm watching the cable stuff now. You know the the Cinemax. You know all that other stuff, the Prime Network, and all that now. I hardly watch the regular stuff. So anyway, uh, maybe you know. But anyway, so hopefully we'll have a nice channel. It's like when you go into Islands. You ever go to Islands? Great restaurant, wonderful restaurant, Islands. And if you go in there on the TV screen, it'll say the Surfing Channel, and it'll see the surfers or skateboards and all that. So we plan to have like that, uh, Martial Arts History Museum channel. And the goal of the new location is to have a restaurant and within the restaurant, you'll see that channel going on. So that'll be pretty cool. A lot of great plans. I've always said, um, uh, I, I like to refer myself to be like Walt Disney, be very creative. And I, I always said, if I had the money, uh, I can do everything Walt Disney can. Well, hopefully we'll get the money and we'll do everything Walt Disney can and uh, do, bring great stuff to the community. And then people can come to the museum and spend all day there and go through the museum village and uh, go to the restaurant and go to the theater and have all these uh, marathons, to, you know, shows and meet all the stars and, you know, all that great stuff, you know, and have the TV stuff and very exciting stuff and design it like Disney style, you know, very creative style and very creative stuff everywhere. You know, you know me, it's got to be nice and professional and as clean and sharp and enjoyable as we can get. That's what I try to do at the museum. Same thing there. It's already planned out. We already have the designs for it. So just in case you didn't know, we've been designing it all this time. I cannot reveal that yet, but we have been designing the new location. So hopefully all things will go through and uh, that'll be pretty fun to have a, a new location, but very creative stuff in there. So 
I, I watch this Disney stuff and I learned so much from those guys. And I want to say many, many thank yous to, again, those people at the Natural History Museum, Japanese American Museum, the Chinese Museum, who continue to help me out all the time. I'm always calling the Japanese American Museum saying, hey, how do you guys do your shop? You know, and, and they're happy to help me out. Uh, many thanks to Alan Horn, the president of Disney, who's helped me out lately on many different topics I've had and uh, discussions with him. Thank you, Alan Horn, for doing that. Appreciate it very much. Great man, Alan Horn. So uh, many thanks to all those museums who, who help us out when we need it. They're, they don't say, no, no, you're our competition. No, they say, okay, what do you need? You know, how can we help you out? And they're willing to show me stuff galore. You know, I went to the Japanese American Museum and they took me, here's the theater. Here's how we do, because I want to know about the theater. And they took me all around. Here's what we use. Here's our equipment. And they took me everywhere to, to help me get the Martial Arts History Museum, you know, up to speed and all that. So I appreciate that very much for people helping me out. That's a, that's a lot of work to do. And they're doing it with, out of their, you know, out of their time. They just make time for me. And then they walk me around and answer all my questions. And that's very nice of them. So many thanks to especially the Japanese American a National Museum here in Los Angeles. I cannot say enough about them. And uh, the work they do for the community has been fantastic. And the work they've done to help the Martial Arts History Museum has been wonderful. Matter of fact, they, they sponsored a big event that we had there at the Japanese American Museum. And we showed the museum and we had uh, exhibits and we had a bunch of uh, fighting with our Camacho and his group. And we had lion dancing and we had a bunch of stuff. Siku Kerry was there. And, and many people, and it was a lot of fun. So uh, many thanks to the Japanese American Museum for funding us so they were able to do that. So anyway, sorry about that. <coughs> a little dry today. It's a little dry here in Southern California. In case you didn't know, uh, right now it is about maybe 75 degrees here in Southern California. It's bright. It's sunny. It's gorgeous. That's what I like it to be. We're always sunny in California all the time. So um, it's a great day out here. It is a great day. So if you don't live in Southern California, I'm sorry about that. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens and uh, we'll go for there. Okay. I've talked my ear off. Sorry about that, everybody. I've talked to you to death. I appreciate your time and very much for watching. And again, before I close, I just want to say, Many thanks to all of you who have watched our videos and helped us get to that mark on YouTube. We are required to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 viewing our hours. It took Cynthia Rothrock and I two over two years to get to that mark and for them to approve of us. It took us two years, and uh, we did it in three months. So let's see what happens if they approve us. That'll be fantastic. There are, before I close, there are many things that I learned on, on uh, how to monetize your channel on YouTube. And that's what I want to end with. There are, are ways that you guys can do funding. There are ways that you can get funding from, uh, hey, everybody, <laughs> people walking by. There are ways that you can make a little money from YouTube. You know, there are many ways. And the kick is, the kick is to know how to, to get things out there and to, to, there are secrets out there that they do not tell you. I can tell you right now, I, I did everything to learn them. And thankfully I learned them and I put them into play. And sure enough, I was able to utilize it and see the difference that it made. So uh, now that I finished and got the 4,000, I'm going to also, in between all this, I know I got a lot to do. In between all this, I'm putting together a full look at for what you guys can use of all the tools, all the secrets, everything I use to get monetized in three months. I'm going to put it all on video and put it out there free for you guys to enjoy. Okay. And that way you can learn from people are making the lore on YouTube especially young kids are making millions on YouTube. So, you know, the place down the street's making 40,000 a month on YouTube. So I'm going to take everything I learned and, and put it into a video so you guys can enjoy it. And, and I encourage everybody to go on YouTube and, and make some money, make a little bit of money, you know, especially during this time, make a little bit of money. So I will get that out as soon as I can. 
work on that. And that way you guys can uh, learn all the tricks of the trade that, uh, that I had to stumble through. You know, I hate going on to these pages to say, we'll get you a thousand subscribers in your week. And you watch it. And they say, there's no way. And they're just talking fluff. You know what I mean? So anyway, I'm not going to talk fluff. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to show you the screens. I'm going to show you everything I learned so you guys can do that. So I'm going to work on that. Uh, I am not. don't promise it right away, but I'm going to work on that as we go along. And that way you guys will be able to hopefully use what I use as secrets and get monetized. Okay. So anyway, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, anybody have any questions before I go? Any questions? Thank you for all your comments on the right. Uh, Robert says, always great to see your passion and flow. Love the show. Well, thank you very much. Uh, people say, when, <laughs> when I, I, I do a lot of presentations. I kid you not. I do a lot of presentations for the museum. I used to do them back after back, one after the other. And it's not just small crowds. I do a lot of presentations for very large crowds. I, I remember one time I had to talk, talk for two hours in the museum on a huge stage. And there I was talking to everybody. So, um, you know, uh, I, and people say after they see it, boy, you have a passion for, for what you're doing. I said, oh, does it show? And they say, yeah, I can see it in there. And I said, okay, good. I do. I have a passion for what I do because, you know, we love the martial arts and, and I have a passion for the museum and that's what it's about. I enjoy it. And uh, I, I enjoy everybody helping us. And uh, as, as, as I leave, I just want to say again, thank you everybody for being a part of this, helping us get to YouTube to get to that uh, mark of 4,000 subscribers. It is you guys that make this dream a reality. I could not do it without you. You are the pioneers of this museum. And uh, years from now, you can tell your great, great grandkids that I was part of it. I helped them get 4,000 subscribers. I helped them clean up the museum. I helped them I helped them at Dragon Fest. I had a booth there at Dragon Fest. Whatever you did to help the museum in any way, thank you. You can always say, I was there. I was part of that. I helped the museum. I was part of that history. So thank you, everybody. Uh, many, many, many thank yous. Uh, appreciate it very much for all you do for me. Um, who am I? Who am I? You know, I just, I'm just another one of us, guys. So thank you again for for being there and supporting this great cause. In the end, this is all about for all of us. In the end, it's a museum for all of us to enjoy. And I hope everybody does that long after I'm gone. Hopefully I won't be gone soon. Hopefully I'll be here for another uh, 30, 40 years, but we'll see. And uh, hopefully you guys will uh, still hear me talking here on YouTube. I don't know if they have YouTube. <laughs> and what happened to MySpace, you know? You never know. These things come and go. Facebook will come and go. YouTube will come and go. And a new one will come and go. So we'll see what's there. Maybe it'll be all the holograms by then. So anyway, uh uh robert says thank you for the insights and the stories just awesome uh, thank you guys okay thank you guys uh you guys all take care and uh, it's been a blast thank you for your time today and i hope you enjoy if you haven't seen it uh my biography on my life uh it was a lot of fun to do it was a lot of fun to do and i hope you guys learned uh, a little more about me okay everybody you take care sifu douglas wong sifu uh samuel kwok uh, good to have some of the legends here watching as well Always a pleasure, everybody. Always a pleasure. You guys take care. Okay, bye.